Welcome to the next session of my series on how to fly FPV multirotors using the FPV Freerider Simulator. In this session we're going to work on something that everybody uh, wants to get to and that is flips and rolls. When you start to do flips and rolls, well, in a simulator there's very little at stake and you'll probably find flips and rolls to be very easy. And in fact flips and rolls are not that difficult and uh, one of the biggest challenges to doing flips and rolls is just getting over the fear of them, right? Uh, if you get enough altitude, and if your rates are high enough, then all you have to do is move the stick, and the copter will flip or roll. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do when you're practicing flips and rolls in real life is make sure that your rates are high enough. So if we go to the custom settings, I'm going to reset them to defaults, I'm going to turn my pitch and roll rate way down, okay? And then we're going to go to, oh, let's mix it up a little. Let's go to the meadow this time. We'll go to the meadow, and I'll... I don't know what happened there, but I'll lift off. Now look how look how slow my... look how much I'm moving the stick. Rates are really low, and if I attempt to do a flipper roll, I cannot finish it before I hit the ground. Okay, so that's no good. Whereas, I don't think I changed my roll. My foot, my, my pitch rate is not very high either. Notice how much trouble I'm going to have finishing it before I hit the ground. Okay, so you must have your rates high enough. So before you, if you attempt this in the simulator, of course, it's just trial and error and it's no problem. But in real life, if you try to do this, get a lot of altitude, get a lot of altitude, and then just bang your stick all the way over and just get a sense for how fast it moves um, and make sure that it looks like you might be able to finish the move before you hit the ground okay so just do a little push over okay and if your copter is still sort of in control and you're not losing it a little more a little more and then a few full deflection moves just to feel how fast it's moving and you should get a good 45 degrees or or maybe a quarter 90 degrees turn and then just put it back right Okay, but if your rates aren't high enough, you will hit the ground before you finish the move, no matter what. So, okay, so so definitely in real life, make sure that that's the case. So I'm going to now change to the snappy defaults. I'm going to put my throttle at 100. I'll leave everything else as it is. And now the rates are much higher, and what we can see is I'm going to get some altitude, lots of altitude. And you can see now I have much more rates as I bang the stick. Okay. So as you're getting into flips and rolls, uh, the first thing I want you to do is just get, get some altitude. Now I know this is the simulator, so we have very little at stake, right? But it's a good habit to get into, and if you're going to practice this in real life, find a big open environment like a soccer field or a big old mowed farm field with some good grass, and get lots of altitude so that no matter what, you'll have time to recover. And then just do some sharp 45 degree turns just to just to get a feel for how fast uh, the copter moves. Sorry, my joystick glitched there slightly. It does that sometimes. Let's hope it doesn't keep doing that. Raise the throttle here. This is, I think, is I think this has a ceiling on it. I think this is as high as I can go. Just and even if you go over 90 degrees, it's not a problem. You see, I have plenty of time before I hit the ground to level back out. One of the challenges in doing flips and rolls is getting back to your level position and finding the horizon again. So if you're doing some practicing and you end up like this, don't freak out. Just level back out again, okay? The horizon is going to look different and it's going to be a little disorienting at first and that's okay. It's no problem. Just, just get some altitude, get some altitude and and go back. Flip. Hit your, or roll over and go back. No problem. And by the way, I do recommend starting with rolls first and doing flips second because rolls, you maintain the horizon and view the whole time. So it's not that different from what you have been doing. Flips is a little more disorientating because the horizon can turn upside down. And then the next thing you're going to start doing is you're just going to go even further and you're just going to hold the stick until the horizon comes back around. And there's a roll, okay? 
And believe it or not, as simple as that is in the simulator, it is exactly like that in real life, as long as your rates are high enough and your altitude is high enough. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to practice stopping with the horizon level. And you're going to need to anticipate that a little bit, depending on how your copter flies. So, and I didn't quite stop with the horizon level, just level out after you're done. If you overshoot a little, that's okay. Just level out again after you're done. All right. Definitely want to go to full deflection on the stick so you get maximum rates. Chances are that you are not flying at such high rates that it'll be too much. If you're if you're flying at rates where it's so fast that full deflection is too much, you probably don't need these lessons. Or you, you probably should lower your rates <laughs> because you're, they're way too high for you at the level of uh, skill you're at. Okay. Again, full deflection, 360 turn, and you're done. All right. Now. I'm not actually doing the best thing with the throttle. You really don't want to have your throttle active when you are uh, when you're inverted. Um, so what you're really going to want to do is drop the throttle as you enter the move and raise the throttle as you come out of the move. Now if you are, depending on how your copter is configured, if you drop the throttle all the way down, you may lose authority. That doesn't happen in FPV Freerider Simulator. So if you are flying with motor stop enabled in clean flight, for example, and you drop the throttle all the way down, the copter will just tumble. You'll complete your motors will turn off and it'll just become a rock. So don't do that. Um, you can do that. You can avoid that with an idle up switch. You can avoid that simply by just manually not lowering the throttle too low, or you can avoid that uh, by using Betaflight's air mode although you still need to have motor stop disabled. I don't fly with motor stop for that reason. I prefer, and I fly with an idle up switch, again, for that reason. So I can lower my throttle in real life all the way down and not, uh, and not lose any authority. And if you do a search on my YouTube channel for the term idle up, uh, you can find how to configure an idle up. And there's also a video I have called Zero Throttle Descents with Idle Up Switch that shows uh, what the effect of this is. So definitely give that a look. If what you'll want to do in real life before you try this is, again, take your copter up good and high, drop your throttle all the way to the bottom, and see what happens. And if your copter just, if your motors turn off and your copter just starts to tumble, you're definitely going to want to figure out what you need to do about that. Either use an idle up switch, either disable motor stop, or uh, use air mode with, with motor stop disabled, any number of things that are sort of out of the scope of this video. But definitely take your copter up good and high and just drop your throttle all the way and make sure that you can still you still have authority on your sticks because if not you're gonna get yourself in trouble potentially okay so again get some altitude drop the throttle roll come out of it level out again if you overshoot that's fine you will get used to the rate at which your copter moves and you will get used to timing your rolls and you'll you'll get good at it all right, now let's try let's try flips next. So for flips, it's a very similar process, but the horizon is not as not in view the whole time. When you do a flip FPV, the, it goes sky, ground, sky, sky, and then you're back around again. All right, you see. So now we're looking at the horizon. Get a little lower so we can see the horizon a little better. We're looking at the horizon, ground. Upside down horizon sky, and you're back. Horizon, ground, upside down horizon sky, and you, well, I crashed. <laughs> um, so make sure you have enough altitude, but I wanted you to be able to see the horizon. So as you do flips, you're gonna wanna practice in getting used to seeing that. As you see the sky the last time, you're getting close to being done, and you're gonna wanna start recentering the stick. All right? and come out of it. Okay? Now, if you overshoot and end up looking at the ground, just level the horizon back out again. And if you undershoot and end up looking at the sky, continue the move, find the horizon again. You definitely want to have enough altitude if you're going to try this in real life that you have time when you mess up, especially if your rates are high. Oh, what do I find the horizon again? You need time to find the horizon again. Okay? And a backflip is the same, just in the other order. Okay? So take some time to practice those moves. 
Okay, well, that's a good altitude. Uh, because, again, even though it's a simulator, it's a good practice to get into for when you do it in real life. Drop your throttle, make your move, full deflection, make your move, and then find the horizon again. If you overshoot or undershoot, just find the horizon again and level it out. Or if you're doing flips, or flips, find the horizon again. Ooh, that was an extreme example. I stopped upside down. I practice that for a little bit, and then we will uh, move on to the next session and try some slightly more advanced stuff.